Welcome to Into the Woo, a wellness podcast hosted by Alice Hu. I will be exploring the world of crystals, energy healing, spirit guides, and more to help you understand how they can unlock your potential. These concepts have helped me discover my purpose and my truth, and I can't wait to hear how they will inspire you. I'll show you how they can be accessible and powerful tools in your life. I discovered morning and evening rituals by accident. I realized one day that when I started my day with a yoga class, I felt so much better. And my day was just effortlessly flowing. It then expanded to adding in an intention, reading an excerpt from a book, to a conscious understanding of how I need to start and end the day. I started teaching the importance of rituals last year for entrepreneurs and creatives who wanted to organize their day better. We all know the days that start off wrong and when we wake up and somehow don't get any better. Incorporating a morning and evening ritual will course correct and start the day off the right way for you. I found it to be one of the easiest ways to shift my energy and my mood. A ritual is actually a boundary. Boundaries are necessary for your well-being as they communicate to you and others what you need to be healthy and how you need to be supported. So what does it look like? Depending on the day, I usually spend around one to two hours in the morning and the same amount of time in the evening to settle in and to wind down. Okay, so I know for some of you, you're thinking, that's insane. I don't have this much time. If you're just starting out spending five 15 minutes in the morning to enjoy your coffee, tea, breakfast, and writing down a list of to-dos may be the perfect way to start out. There are some days my rituals are longer and some days they need to be shorter. But what's the one thing I always do? I don't look at my phone immediately when I wake up. I can't stress this enough. Do not look at your phone when you wake up. I actually keep my phone and all my electronics out of my bedroom. But recently I've been listening to Headspace before bed, so I actually put my iPad on airplane mode and pre-download the meditation. I've been using an analog clock for over the last year and I love it. When I first got it, it took me a second to figure it out because it had just been so long since I used one. So when you look at your phone to check emails, messages, news, whatever, you're letting someone else decide how you're starting your day. You're allowing someone to determine your mood and your priorities. By setting time aside for you, you can check in to see how you're doing and how you're feeling, organizing your thoughts and your to-dos before everything else that will come your way. If this is the only thing that you start doing, you'll be feeling differently in no time. I start off my mornings with two glasses of warm lemon water. I then wait a bit and have some celery juice. During this time, I like to meditate, maybe journal, read an excerpt from my daily yoga book, and ideally spend some time outside. I also like to incorporate some movement, stretching, yoga, or another type of fitness class. I've discovered that it's very difficult for me to work out later in the day. I just get lazy. So beginning the day with a workout, a walk outside is perfect. I also like to write down a few things I want to get done for the day so that I don't forget about these priorities. In the evening, I really notice that I need to start unwinding by reading and journaling around 9.30 p.m. so I don't miss my window for sleep. During quarantine, I've realized that I actually get tired around 8, 8.30 and my body is ready to sleep around grandma bedtime, which is 9.30, 10. But I like to use the evenings as a way to relax and watch TV. Watching TV, even with blue light blockers, was preventing me from sleeping at a healthy time. And honestly, I don't think I have a healthy relationship with TV. Um, and for the last 10 days or so, I've stopped watching TV um, because usually I watch right before bed and it's really helped my sleep. I've also taken some magnesium to help me sleep better. According to TCM, 
you need to sleep around 10, 30, 11, so that you give your body time to detox and do what it needs to do so you can stay healthy. So for me before I would watch some TV, get sucked in and then poof, it would be 1am. I would sleep late and wake up late or wake up at the same time and just not get enough rest. The foundation for a good morning ritual is a good evening ritual. If I don't get enough sleep, I feel moody and irritable. Even if I sleep a full eight hours with a later bedtime, it isn't the same as sleeping earlier and for eight hours. I've tried it. It just doesn't work. So what I've done is started to shift my thinking around sleep. Sleep is crucial to the processing of memories, emotions, immunity, and so much more. A healthy sleep schedule is crucial to your health. When you are sleeping, you enter the theta brainwave state when you dream. This is a space where you're able to tap into your subconscious and access your intuition. In your waking hours, you'll be able to make better decisions and your creativity will improve. So our beliefs and how we believe our reality is constructed is held within the subconscious mind. When you're in theta, it can also boost learning. Specifically in the state of mind, you can introduce ideas, beliefs, information that will be readily absorbed. So you can start reprogramming your brain during deep sleep or during meditation. You actually also enter the theta brainwave state during meditation as well. It's crazy, right? This is why for Woo Woo Company and for this podcast, I include meditations They should not be skipped. I've also thought about recording affirmations and having them play while I sleep. If I end up doing it, I'll be sure to share via podcast how it turns out. Okay, so there you have it. I hope you're feeling more inspired to explore how you can mindfully and consciously craft your ideal day by starting and ending with rituals. It can really happen Your internal world is reflected in the external world. Create a ritual to start and end the day that serves your highest good. I want to hear how it goes for you. So message me on Instagram at W-O-O-W-O-O-C-O. This episode's workbook is a guide that has specific rituals you can incorporate into your daily routine. Mix and match the ones you like. Discover ones that promote peace, focus, shift your energy, and more. You'll refer back to this guide all the time to help you be your best self. For those of you who want to connect with other like-minded individuals who are also on the spiritual path and interested in the topics I share on this podcast, check out the monthly membership. It's filled with events, meditations, healing sessions, community, and more. I'm excited to be gathering a special group of people together and hosting custom events just for them. Link in the show notes for more information.